What's going on, y'all? What's good? It's your boy, Jay Swab. I'm the host of Jay Swab ENT, and today we're back with another video to talk to y'all about the latest solo level episode, and also give y'all a season one recap because, unfortunately, episode 12 was the season finale. Aww. It's been a crazy ride, I'm not gonna lie. Jin Woo, he's had his ups and downs, you know, but uh, man's came out on top again in the end. I don't know, it was a crazy episode, but he did what he had to do, stood on business as always. And we're gonna talk about all that in this video. If you like anything I had to say at all throughout the video, as we continue on consider liking the vid subscribing and checking out so level for yourself i know it's a new series but again i think it's worth to watch it's undeniable after this season i think it's definitely one of the best winter anime of the season but we gonna dive right into the episode we gonna start out where we left off this man Jin who's in the dungeon and he's realizing that he lost the stone one of the night stepped on it so he's basically cooked there's no escaping from here until he beats all of these monsters but He's already accepted it. He's like, like I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm, I'm gonna go out swinging. So he's literally going out swinging and his knuckles, you see that they're bleeding. Like it looks like his fingers are falling off from his hand. Mind you, from the last episode, they already mentioned he cannot heal. So he's in this for the long haul. After fighting Igris, after fighting all the monsters from the last episode, he's here to fight more monsters on this time period that seems like it's never gonna end. While he's doing this, he's getting these messages of doubt going through his head about who he used to be. This is E-Rank Hunter, you know, a liability, X, Y, and Z. You hear all these voices from Mr. Song and Joe He from the past. But then you get my man Sung Jin Woo himself self coming in you know from the beginning of the series he's talking down on courage and we'll be saying that a lot of what he's showing right now is just external but on the inside he's just e-rank he's still weak and so generally he's trying to just cast out all of this doubt but man's is in his head like young little jin Wu is in his head about all of this and he's kind of like losing his hope that this battle can be won so we move on from the dungeon portion of the episode and we go to the chairman and jin chul chairman's asking jin chul if he was on the raid to j2 island in the past he was like yeah he ran per perimeter at that point in time when they were out there uh you know security i guess for to see when everybody was ready to head back the chairman gets to talking about raids like that you know that hunters come back from come back from it but they still have mental scars that they have to overcome on their own time and so then we go back to jin Woon, we see the mental scars that he's going through because even though he wasn't involved with jeju island at the end of the day my man is basically an s-rank hunter and he's gone through his fair share of fights to kill people he's struggled deeply to go through these dungeons mind he's doing this by himself it's not like he's just with a team like it's all him so all these experiences are his own outside of like when he was in a dungeon with jin ho as he's trying to survive through this dungeon you got little jin who's still talking down to him and everything like that and then we see that the system gives him a prompt saying that this period that he's been in the dungeon is going to end soon and so little jin who points out oh you got lucky man they really they trying to look out for you today they don't want you to die so it's interesting to see that the system is still so dedicated to keep jin Woo alive and it's understandable because of who man is this. at the epitome of his character he's somebody that despite all that what little jin Woo said is somebody who strives for more he wants to be more despite what his status says so it's credit to him as a character that the system still wants to keep him alive the timer ends up going away and he goes to serve the penalty so this penalty mid dungeon is a direct result of jinwoo not completing his daily quest from the episode before remember he said he was gonna come back and he was gonna beat the dungeon and just come back and do the daily quest at that point in time when he didn't get to it and so now the system is punishing him for that but technically saving him and getting him out of the current situation that he was in. So he gets to this penalty zone where the centipede was, but this time it's multiple centipedes. But I think at least he can heal this time around because it's not the same conditions as the other dungeons. So he's on BT. He's like, all right, y'all don't know how much stronger I've gotten. I'm, I'm having a sense of relief right now that I get to take my anger out on y'all before I end up having to go back to that dungeon. Because mind you, he's, he got banished to this penalty, but he still has to complete the dungeon. So that means after this, he has to go right back into that territory, find all the knights and the mages. So but he's, he's taking on the chain. He's like, yo, this is a break for me. And he gets to do what we gotta do. Mind you, another four hours, he gotta fight these centipedes, but he's going to work. We briefly go over to the unit that's going to Jeju Island uh, with Aizen leading the way. Got some recruits saying that, you know, they never went to Jeju or they were there briefly, but they understand what it means to him you know and i'm just thinking like yo like but what, what is what's going on like what's the history on this island we saw from the very first episode i believe he was with two other people the s rank they talked to a couple episodes ago and then somebody else they were fighting the ants that we see at the end of the episode but we don't really have an idea of exactly what happened on the island yet and we don't really get an idea at the end of the season so i'm interested to touch more on jeju island in the next season because aizen clearly has deep ties to it and we go back to the penalty and jin woo has completed it he's, he's He's murdered all these centipedes like he's he, 
Jesus Christ, he's done them way, he did them crazy. He's leveling up, he's gotten this Night Killer knife now that, you know, is gonna enable him to do a lot more damage than the other little knife he had back in the day. He's using the stone that Igris had dropped off after his fight, he activates it so he gets another power up there. And then he gets an ability, like a force ability, where he's able to pull little objects in, similar to what Igris is able to do uh, in the episode before, he was able to bring his sword to him to try to finish off Jinwoo while he was sitting on the throne. So he gets all these abilities, and he levels up, and he heals up, and now he's ready to go back to the uncharted territory that he once was in. He gets it back and he's on BT immediately. He's like, yo, like, like I thought I was finished for real. I never yielded. And as you can see, I am not dead. He's slicing up these knives and everything. He's feeling good. The knife is feeling good, but he's trying to understand why they keep on coming. It's like these raids are not ending. But then he realizes that it's the mages that are using summoning magic to bring these knights in from these different portals to cause more friction. So after that, Jin was like, all right, my new target has to be the mages. So he starts blitzing, going crazy, knocking them out one at a time. The mages catch on to it. So they're like, okay, it's, it's like five or six of them in there. So they're like, okay, we gotta strategize now. So they put it in place where the knights that are in the room, they combine to make one golem. It's a big golem, man, that Jinwoo has to face off with. He's like, you think one big opponent is gonna stop me from doing what I gotta do from standing on business? He blitzes the golem and he kills all the mages that are behind him. Mind you, the animation during all of this, so crisp like they ended out the season in a great way the animation looked good but it's all a testament to Jin Woo and the levels that he's grown since messing with the system for him to be able to do all of this and not really any breaks i mean he went through the penalty yeah he called it a break but he started to fight and beat those centipedes on his own like it's just it's crazy work like this whole level thing is not a game but Jin Woo make it look easy once he gets through the mages though the golem turns around he gives him a solid hit so Jin Woo has to kind of block it and he's like bro like the mages are down like die already bro damn <laughs> they basically flexes gets him out of there and the golem is cooked and that's it the dungeon is over with Jin Woo comes back stands on business and gets them all out the way so as the system said earlier last episode they said once you're able to get through this next phase of the dungeon not only are you gonna level up crazy and get some items but you're gonna be able to change your current occupation. So we know Jin Woo is like an assassin type right now. I think it's like lone or like wolf hunter or something like that. But now it's changing to something called necromancer that focuses on a lot more magic, similar to what the mages were doing uh, earlier in the, this episode and episode before. He's like, nah, I'm not messing with that. I'm, I'm an assassin build. Like I'm a combat fighter. This is not my steez, you know what I'm saying? So he, he dubs, he's like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. But the system's like, <laughs> You say no to me? Like what? And then he's pissed. He's like, I don't, I really don't want to do this, but and he rationalized. He's like, okay, well, at the very least, the mages are able to summon things, right? I've seen that with the knights. They were the cause of me having to fight all of these low rank, you know, unnecessary ass knights that I was fighting this whole time. Maybe if I have that ability, I won't have to solo level anymore. I can have my own team, perhaps, you know, like it, it, it's a possibility. Being that he can't say no to the system, he ends up saying yes. And because of all the extra damage he did in that dungeon, this dungeon alone, he leveled up past the new role that he got as a necromancer and ends up being a shadow monarch. So let's just get into what he's able to do with this shadow monarch ability. Basically, he's able to bring back the shadows of not just the enemies that he's beating, like the monsters that he's beating and everything like that, of different levels, varying degrees, because we know the monsters, depending on the font or the color around their names, that, that shows how tough they are. He can bring back enemies, shadows, as strong as they were in their prime condition. You see him do it to Igris as well later on in the episode. He even says in his episode, he's like, I'm no longer a solo leveler anymore. I got a squad now. So essentially he could store these shadows that he brings back and use them at a moment's notice whenever he needs to. So it's, it's like he's kind of still solo, but he has the shadows now varying degrees that he can send out whenever things get dicey. And I mean, Igris alone, him and Igris going at it against any monster, it's gonna be tough for that monster to come out on top. And it took a while for him to get Igris too. It's like catching a, a, a legendary Pokemon. It's not gonna be sweet to just get him. And who has to talk him down a little bit and look like, at the end of the day, you serve an empty throne. The person you was waiting for to come back is not there. You got me somebody who's shown that he's worthy on multiple occasions to stand on business and get the job done you, why are you not gonna mess with me what else i gotta prove to you to show you that i'm i'm one i'm one of them i'm the main character like come on bro at some point igris he's like all right bro 
I'm gonna mess with you. And he stops fighting, comes back, and he looks epic. Other shadows is like, eh, you know, it's nights or whatever. But Igris, he came back like, he ain't lose a beat, you know what I'm saying? So it's it, it's, it's good to see that Jun Woo is really building a squad. It's crazy to see, to be honest. We even have the chairman commenting on it uh, while this is happening about somebody who reawakens going and exceeding expectations of a regular reawakened person. To go the extra mile of, you know, potentially being your own like guiding light as he calls it is impressive and it's a once in a lifetime thing clearly and Jin Woo he meets that criteria so it's gonna be interesting to see how he goes into season two with this new ability and with this new squad of people he has knowing Jin Woo he goes through dungeons on a regular basis so he's just gonna keep on amassing these uh soldiers to serve his legion and it's gonna get nasty in season two. We end off the season with the post credit scene. You know, we see Aizen and, and the girl who was talking to him earlier in the episode, they land on Jeju Island and they somehow manage to recover an ant that's there. They comment on the fact that it's evolving, like it's leveling up or bad. <laughs> I'm curious to see what that means. We didn't really see the ant flinch or move or anything toward the end of the episode. So I'm curious what that entails come season two, but man, like, Season one was something, I'll tell you that. From where Jin Woo came from to the end of the season, just a testament to him as a character, you know, the dog that he has. Now, granted, I will say the last two episodes, it felt a lot really plot armor centric. I mean, his fight against Igris alone, he already admits that. It was luck that got him to win. But even the fact that he served the daily penalty when he did in the episode, I, I, I don't know, it's a little, it's a little sketchy because we don't know the exact amount of time that passed on the outside. Like we see Jin Woo's sister in this episode, she's right getting ready to go to bed. So we don't know when he gets these daily quests or whatever. So it could be a plot hole, but it is what it is. You know, he came out on top at the end of the day and the system clearly wants to keep him alive for whatever reason. Uh, so we still have to keep that in mind and find out why Jin Woo is so important. What about him makes him important? Obviously there's messages when he's changing his status to Necromancer, like shadows will follow the angel of death somebody who's like determined to continue to move forward no matter what uh, opposition is against them they fight by themselves they don't they need no help along the way and i guess that's rare in a hunter right like we know hunters to travel in groups so for him to go solo through all of these dungeons that come out on top every time it's got to be impressive to them my only question is why did they choose him from the beginning like what about Jin Woo stood out from the very beginning it's kind of like they're playing with him because even in the beginning he definitely was not ready for any of this on the other hand it's like they might have had to see something in him to declare him as worthy of the system granted he was the last one to stay in the double dungeon so it makes sense that okay he could have ran away but he stayed here till the very end so maybe they had respect for him for that i don't know i mean it's a noble thing to do right still got a lot to cover in the next season like jeju island the brother that we still didn't even see this season that's supposed to be after jinu's head we got a lot to talk about i do want to see about dropping a season two like predictions or expectations video um, just because solo leveling is great and I've seen that a lot of y'all have been receiving it pretty well on the channel um, They're like my most viewed videos on the channel So I definitely want to follow up and talk more about solo leveling during this little break I don't know if I want to read though because I feel like you know I don't know how far the model is I'd have to look into that But I, I just I don't know depending on when the, the next season is gonna drop I might not read it sometimes when a season is very good of an anime I'll go right into the book after like that. I did it with Demon Slayer. I did it with JJK I think I did it with Black Clover too. So again, it's like it all depends on how far the book is from the anime, but I might wait out one more season before I start reading the, the manual. I'm not gonna, it all, it all depends, you know, but I do wanna drop an expectations video. I think I wanna do a character analysis on Jin Woo as like his own standalone character. Just because a lot of questions that I have like about the ending of season one and just Jin Woo giving up his emotions and everything like that. How is that gonna translate in season two? Like when he gets out of here, how is he gonna interact with his sister? Like it's, it's so many different things that you know, it still need to be discussed. They left us with a lot of questions, but they just showed us that Jin Woo has the ability to step with anybody. We've seen that countless times throughout the season, you know, his fight with Kang, his fight with that s rank monster, and him just being able to solo these dungeons by himself. Jin Woo was just, he's just him. Like, I, I don't know what else to say about Jin Woo, man. Like, he's constantly on top, no matter what the situation is. And I just suspect his work ethic and wanted to be better. You know, I think any of any one of us can strive to just want to better ourselves in a day to day. I know I do. It's easier said than done, but you know, shout out to Jin Woo for making it happen, at least in his profession, you know? But going back to the relationships thing that I said, like with his sister, like I do look forward to seeing how his relationships will be affected and tested come this next season. We know how he is on the court, but what's he doing off the court? You know, I want to see a little bit more of that next season. But with that said, that's what I got for this solo leveling season finale slash season one recap. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, 
I hope y'all enjoyed the show. I hope y'all tapped into the show and I hope that my videos helped, you know, inspire y'all to maybe look into it because it's great. Like I said, one of the best winter anime to drop this season. Um, so if you haven't, go look at it. It's all on Crunchyroll. Go check in, go tap in and come watch my videos after the fact because yeah, like we get into a lot. With that said, I hope y'all enjoyed anything that I had to say at all. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, like and consider subscribing for more content coming down the road. I am Jay Swab, host of Jay Swab ENT and I hope you enjoyed and we will talk soon. Peace.